Hello and welcome to my channel. I've dropped off my wife and I think I've evaded the snow. Welcome back and thanks for being here. My name is Scott and if you've been following along then you already know that I am on a cross country journey. If you don't already know then feel free to go check it out up here. I've got a playlist that I'm going to get started. I have traveled to California to pick up not the rest of my mother's stuff but more of my mother's stuff. The last of it that we will be getting. Anything that we've left behind is now on its way to the DAV thrift store. Yesterday morning I dropped off my wife at the airport. Her flight left at 6.20 a.m. So I dropped her off at 4.20 a.m. And she got home easily enough. I mean, it's always the worst flight ever. Blah, blah. She had a long layover. I've got seven long layovers. That's just the way this is going. So uh, I know that flights can sometimes be terrible, but it's always faster than driving. I made it to St. George, Utah last night. St. George is a, it's a quaint town but it is quite possibly the largest city I've ever been in that had garbage for cell phone coverage. And I, you know, I've talked to you guys in a previous video about the lack of cell phone coverage, how it makes navigating difficult. And my fault, I didn't download offline maps of that area before I got there because I figured I would just download them at the hotel. Everything there internet wise sucked. <laughs> uh, I eventually did uh, download offline stuff at a fuel station up the road a little bit, but in St. George itself, it's almost as if there's only one working cell phone tower there. And if you're inside of any building anywhere, it, you're not going to get a signal. I can't explain it. And this is a college town, right? So, I mean, the students there have to rely on cell phone. And so I, I guess they just must have Wi-Fi everywhere they go because the cell phone signals are terrible. Either that or Verizon is terrible there. I use Verizon. I did manage to get laundry done. I think I mentioned in a previous video that I needed to do laundry. I had hand washed the clothes that I wore yesterday. Now I'm in nice, fresh, clean clothing. And so um, I feel almost no different because I'm still stuck in a car and whatever. But it's nice to have clean clothes anyway and not hauling around the dirty clothes everywhere. After I left St. George, oh my goodness, the, from St. George to go north on 15 was basically a 50 mile climb. Some portions of the climb were steeper than others. I wonder how that sounded on the microphone. But it went on for 50 miles. Surprisingly, my climb only took me to 6,600 feet. It felt like it was higher than that, but it just went on and on and on. And I could actually see the needle on my fuel gauge drop. It was just, it was amazing how fast that gauge dropped. I knew that the, my fuel mileage was gonna be terrible. I stopped for fuel after just, I think it was only 100 miles. I'll, I'll note something up here in the corner just to point it out. But what I do remember about that Philip is 15.6 miles per gallon, the worst fuel economy of the whole trip. And that was the course, I, you know, and I wasn't really speeding either. The speed limit shockingly in Utah is 80 miles an hour. When I left, it was dark. There was no way I was going to drive 80 miles an hour in the dark with a trailer. And even when the sun came up, I kept it at 70 miles an hour. So my 70 miles an hour in the dark and even in the, in the daylight was all while climbing and I had a pretty stiff wind. I think a headwind because I could feel the car doing this bit a little bit. And if it was just a straight crosswind, it'd be one thing, but it was, I could feel the car being pushed in different directions. So it must've been a headwind. Yeah, fuel gauge was just sucking down real fast so 15.6 miles per gallon now I have seen I don't remember what my best was but in California because of the lower speed limits I I think I saw 25 and 26 miles per gallon 
which is fantastic. I sure everybody who says I should be driving a pickup truck or a big SUV, it's sure those would get to 15.6 miles per gallon, but they won't get the 26 miles per gallon, which is what I was really thrilled to have in California given my load. Once I left wherever it was that I fueled up, my next tank was a little better. I think it was 20 miles per gallon. But as I got up the road, I had a decision to make. First thing when I woke up this morning, uh, hotel Wi-Fi was not bad. But again, I did not think about downloading maps before leaving that hotel. Just completely forgot. But what I did remember to do is look at road conditions. And I had two thoughts in my head. I could take 70 east and go up to, I forget the name of the tunnel, I think it's Eisenhower. The fast lane truck, they infamously do their, I don't know what they're called, I'm gonna just make up a word, a name. They do their, their truck towing torture test. I'll flash the real name of it up here if they have a real name for it. But there is a climb from a city it's just six miles from the Eisenhower Tunnel. And I don't know what the percentage climb is on it. I think the speed limit is 60. And so they do a, a test where they put the maximum payload on a truck. Well, not a payload, but I'm talking about a trailer. So maximum haul on a trailer, and then they go up the mountain. I think when they do it, they go flat out as hard as the truck can go. And sometimes that most of the time that goes well, but every now and then it doesn't. Now I wasn't going to do that in this car because for two reasons. One is Volkswagen of America doesn't rate this car for towing. So what do I do for max? Over in the UK, the max allowable towing is 3,520 pounds with trailer brakes. Well, I don't have that and I'm not gonna do it. And if I take the 1,400 pounds that I have back there and do full send up the mountain, well, I could easily wind up in jail because this car will just, even with this load back here, even going up a 7% grade, it will accelerate to the point of disintegrating the trailer tires, which are only speed rated for 81 miles an hour. So I know I can do 100 plus with this trailer, even up a climb like that, but I wouldn't because it's just stupid. But I would have gone up the Eisenhower Tunnel climb and just had some fun with it. But Vail, Colorado, I think the Eisenhower Tunnel climb and another pass in between there. It was all yellow and red, change required and all that other stuff. Denver looks all plugged up, no thanks. Usually 80 is the same. Evanston, Fort Bridger, and Laramie. Uh, that's three of the places I can think of right off the top of my head that are usually plugged up with snow, but they looked great. They were green all the way across. And so I chose to do 80. The attraction of doing 80, I was hoping to capture, there's this climb near Fort Bridger. And there's nothing spectacular about the climb, but what happens with it is you descend into a valley and then before you get there, there's another climb as you go out of the top and it creates an optical illusion that the, that the hill is just climbing into oblivion. And that somebody took a, a viral photo of that years ago, I think, and there's a mirage in it and it just looks like it's going up into the heavens. And so they called it, I think they called it road, roadway to heaven or something like that. I was hoping to duplicate that photo. I had my still camera set up over here, my GoPro set up here. I had my smartphone in my hand. I was ready to be all kinds of dangerous about photographing stuff, videotaping stuff. I was ready to capture the moment, but it just didn't happen. I think I saw the stretch of road where the phenomenon happens, but I think the sun has to be just right. The heat has to be just right to create the mirage and none of that was there, so I got nothing to share with you. 
So while I didn't capture any great attractions on that portion of the drive, I did evade the snow. I, at least for now I have. I don't know if I'm gonna run into snow later on in Cheyenne. Tonight I'm stopping in Rollins, Wyoming. Oh, by the way, I did get a Starbucks cup from Utah that was in George didn't have any St. George didn't have any I got it in Provo Utah so I got a Utah mug for my wife and next I need to get one from Wyoming Wyoming does not have a lot of Starbucks in the state I'm not gonna say they're all in Cheyenne but that's Along my route, I believe that's where the bulk of the stores are. So I suspect I will get a Starbucks mug tomorrow in Cheyenne. And I am hoping that I do not run into snow in Cheyenne because all along this route in 80, is it's going to be a risk of snow. But at least I shouldn't be running into any more mountain passes. I don't think I am anyway. I will dip down into Colorado just a little bit uh, to, to find a Starbucks down there. I think I might have to go all the way to Fort Collins to get that and then uh, continue east. I expect to hit a couple of new states along that path, 80 most of the way, I think. And then uh, I'm hoping to visit somebody that could be kind of a cool surprise for you. Not that we're going to do a collab or anything like that. Just going to snap a photo and say hello. That's about it. Other than Sequoia National Park, which that's in a previous video, check that out up here. The trip has been kind of boring. I haven't, I've taken a few interesting photographs, I hope. I did, I, I think I missed the, the iconic red rock of Utah. I suspect that those rocks are in the southern part of the state, maybe along 70. I think Moab is down there near uh, Interstate 70. And I missed, I missed it for the most part. And I did see a rather cool formation in Western Wyoming and I took that photo. And so basically it's just a few photos along the way, but nothing exciting as far as uh, very interesting attractions. Maybe that will change. I know today it won't. I am one hour from stopping in Rollins, and I don't expect anything new or interesting to happen between now and then. So stick around, and we'll see what I present for you tomorrow. Until then, please stick around, subscribe if, I, if, this, if this series is interesting to you. And as always, I appreciate you being here. See you next time. Take care.